Welcome to the Mega Manitoba movie. In this episode, we're going to go over our tent and sleeping gear. Okay, so as you can see, on the back of my bicycle, I carry basically all those items there, with the exception of those ponchos and the wool alpaca socks. Uh, those are the best socks that will keep you warm. Uh, so in a cold night, we use uh, those socks. We'll use a hoodie, uh, sweatpants, uh, and that's packed in a wet bag to keep it all um, dry. Uh, so all our clothes, when it's extremely cold, remain in here so that it's dry. And if it pours rain, we have clothing and uh, sleeping gear that will keep us dry and warm. Uh, the first thing that we have is our woods tent. Uh, you can see it right there. It's the uh, woods tent. Yeah, you can grab it, Josh. And uh, that is a two-person tent. It is a little uh, crammed inside, uh, but I do like the fact that it has four side pockets, a little uh, pocket above us. Uh, kind of like a hammock, and it has a really, really good fly. Uh, we have been in torrential downpours, seven inches of rain. As you can see, or here, clearly, it's raining. Um, it's maybe 5.40 right now in the morning. I, uh, we're going to have to wait this out, clearly, because we can't be biking in the rain, so... Yeah, I think we're just going to have to camp out here for a little bit and see what happens. Day two. Not much sleep either. Yeah. Had some hail in the night too. We'll have to check the damage when it's done. Okay, we're in another torrential downpour. Probably have uh, already two inches of rain. We are still dry. Thankfully, I have a new profound respect for this tent. Here we are. Pouring. This does. So we're down in a... It's pouring rain again, about two inches. possibility of hail. Even the camp owners told us we better be careful. And they were so kind enough to open a cabin if it should hail for us. Okay, well we'll try to wait it out and hopefully get dried in the morning. Uh, the tent floor was literally like a waterbed. And so that's been an extremely good tent. Okay, almost six in the morning. Uh, we are like literally flooded out like three inches of water. It must have poured like big time. Look at this. We're, we're literally in, um, we're, we're literally on top of uh, three inches of water. Uh, I cannot uh, say anything uh, bad about that tent. It is about six pounds. Uh, when we looked for a tent, there were three tents that uh, were uh, superior uh, to all other tents. Uh, we were looking for weight, of course. Uh, the heavier it is, the, the more you have to carry on your bike. Uh, we were looking for rainproof and uh, how small it uh, packs. It's very small, it compacts small, uh, it does not weigh as much, and it is very good in the rain. Uh, any other comments, Josh, on the tent? I mean, it is a little bit cramped, yes, but I mean, what do you expect? It's a tent, that's just how it's going to be. Um, personally, I like it though, I like the fact that it has the side pockets, the little hammock thing, and that it has kept us dry through all the downpours that we've been in. So, these are the pillows and the sleeping mats. mats. 
So if you want to undo that, Josh, and show everyone what we use. So this is the pillow. It's extremely, extremely, extremely compact. It's very small. What I like about this pillow is that it actually fits inside the bag of our sleeping mats. Uh, we try to deflate our mats so much so that it gives us just that little extra room and our sleeping pillows go into our sleeping mats. And Josh will demonstrate how these pillows uh, inflate. All you have to do is just blow into it. Yeah, there you go. Four or five breaths, and that's pretty good. Is it pretty firm? Yeah, it's pretty firm. You can set it to how firm you want it to. I don't like it super firm. I like it that can, you know, squash a little bit, but my dad likes it a little bit more firm. Right. I do. So. And that's your pillow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the pillow. And then maybe we'll pause the video and we'll show you the mat. Okay. This is the sleeping mat. Josh will pull it out of the case and uh, unravel it and show you how it all works. Not fully inflated, but there you can see is the mat. Usually it takes about 10 to 12 breaths to blow it up, and we sleep on those mats. They're very compact. Uh, I like the fact that the pillow fits inside. And secondly, uh, they're very light, uh, and they provide a very good R value as well. Uh, so it breaks the cold uh, floor of your tent, wherever your tent is sitting on, what, what kind of ground. Uh, and it and, and it keeps you quite warm. Uh, they're very comfortable, actually. Extremely comfortable. Thankfully, we have these MEC mats. I can see mine taking on water a bit, um, but we connected them together pretty good so that we kept dry. Um, yeah, it's bad. Uh, we're gonna have to wait it out for it to dry out. Okay, that's the mat. And then uh, let's show everyone what we use as a sleeping blanket. Uh, we do not use a sleeping bag. Uh, we probably should use a sleeping bag, but we reduce uh, weight. Just a second here. We reduce weight uh, by using these blankets. Uh, normally, our bike rides have been in the middle of summer where it's extremely hot so we're not using a lot of um, gear to keep ourselves warm at night um, if it does get extremely cold as i mentioned we have the wool socks a hoodie and sweatpants um, and uh, we put all that on if it's extremely cold and uh, we can get by uh, but this is basically what we use it's uh, in a bag of its own and it is a Blanket. You can stand up, Josh, and show everyone. Yeah, so it's just like a blanket. Uh, it covers Josh pretty well because he's not quite six feet. Uh, I don't think it's six feet, the dimensions. Uh, pretty much just goes up to my, um, past my shoulders. If I kind of put it at an angle, it'll cover my feet and I can wrap myself in it almost like a sleeping bag. Uh, if it's really cold, uh, but again, if it's really cold, uh, we do have the um, wool alpaca socks and uh, we usually put a hoodie on, uh, sweatpants on, and um, everything in our dry bag to keep us warm at night. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, Josh, about the sleeping gear and the tent? Not really. I mean... The sleeping blanket's okay. I'd almost prefer to use a bag though, just because I think it would keep us warmer if we need that. But rather than that, I think it's all good, so. I would say 10 to 20% of the time we would need a sleeping bag, uh, but most of the time it is extremely hot and it's actually kind of nice that it probably dips down to 15 degrees overnight. Yeah. Uh, so that actually our bodies cool off. 
uh, we've biked in some extreme heat and uh, we haven't even needed uh, the sleeping blankets. All this gear uh, fits into the yellow uh, dry bag and I'll show you that uh, in just a minute. Okay, we're gonna show you how everything goes into our dry bag. Uh, this is the bag that we use. It's 55 liters from MEC. Uh, this keeps our tent dry, our sleeping mats dry, our pillows dry, and our sleeping blankets dry. All that gear goes into here. Uh, it's probably about 12 to 15 pounds once everything is in here. So the first thing I do, uh, it's very tight. I take our tent and I put it into the bag and I lean it on one side uh, of the bag so that when I put the sleeping mats, which already have the sleeping pillows in there, I just put the, these sleeping mats on the one side. I put one of them all the way down to the bottom. I take the second one and I put that one right beside it, all the way down to the bottom. Then I take our sleeping blankets and because they're quite uh, soft, I can squish them and push them down in between the sleeping mats and also the uh, tent. You can see where the sleeping blanket goes. I take the second one and do the same thing. So now you can see where the sleeping blankets are, the two sleeping pads with the pillows are, and our tent is on this side. And then all I have to do is push the air out and I Roll this down, I don't know, three, four times. I get the air out of it. And then I clip it up. And then it's ready to go on the bike. And that saddles my bike and my uh, two panniers, one goes here, one goes here, and that saddles it on the rack. And you can see we bungee cord the wet bag, the dry bag, onto the rack of the back of the bicycle. That keeps all our sleeping gear dry. So in a downpour, if we're biking, uh, it's not wet and we have a dry place uh, to sleep at night. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Josh and I are looking for any helpful feedback from this episode. Please comment below on any sleeping gear you have used on your bike tour, especially a lightweight sleeping bag that will keep you warm in a colder climate like British Columbia or the Maritimes. Welcome to the Mega Talent. <laughs> Welcome to the Mega Manamoda. Oh my word. <laughs> Make a Manitoba move.